in 2023, Malaysian ringgit was the worst. 4 ringgit 79 cents per US dollar, lowest in 25 years. 3 ringgit 53 cents per Singapore dollar, lowest in our history. That makes us Malaysian think our country's future looks really, really bad. But at the same time, Bank Negara keep telling our people that our ringgit is undervalued. Hey guys, it's Heshwai, your investing friend. We all know what happened in 2024. Malaysia ringgit is the best performing currency in Asia. Suddenly, the narrative changed. Everyone started to become so positive about Malaysia economy. Malaysia is becoming high income nation in 2028. World Bank just upgraded our GDP forecast from 4.3% to 4.9%. But when every Malaysian is so pessimistic about Malaysia, our country is quietly receiving 645 billion ringgit of foreign direct investment since 2021 after COVID. The most important thing is domestic investment reversed the downtrend and started to grow after this FDI came in. And a big portion of this foreign and domestic investment is in data center. 115 billion ringgit of investment received from 2021 to 2023 is in data centers and cloud services. Big international companies like Google, Microsoft, TikTok are rushing to invest in Malaysia. Since ChatGPT was introduced, AI became a huge thing. All the big tech companies are going around the world searching for the right place to build their data centers. And finally, they found Malaysia. Before we find out why Malaysia is the right destination for all these big tech companies, let's understand the new generation of data center business first. Data centers today are not just for storing data anymore. The more important thing is the processing and analyzing part. This is the part where all the AI models like ChatGPT, Google, or TikTok run on. Generate answer for what you ask. Collect all the data from internet to give you the AI-generated answer. Recommend you TikTok video to watch. All this involve AI training, AI inferencing, and cloud computing, which happen not in the cloud, you know, but in the data centers. There are two types of data centers. Hyperscale data center is the most modern one. The size normally is very, very big, more than 10,000 square feet, larger than a football field. Lah. Hyperscale data centers normally serve all these huge companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft. The service provider are like AI training, AI inferencing, cloud computing, and big data analytics, etc. With thousands of servers and serve millions of users. That's why it needs a lot of computing power and storage space. Number two, core location data center. Basically, core location data center serve many, many customers. Unlike hyperscaler that only serve one customer, the benefit of core location data center is like smaller companies can rent the space in the data center, so they don't need to build their data center that will cost a lot. Some examples of core location data center providers are Equinix, Capel, Bridge. Now we know the two types of data centers already. Let's go back to the question, why Malaysia? Why all these tech companies see Malaysia as a destination to build their data centers? Our neighbor Singapore has always been the top destination for data center because the fiber network infrastructure in Singapore is very matured already. And Singapore is like a middle point where most subsea cables in the world converge. So, strong connectivity is a big reason why all these companies choose to build their data centers in Singapore. But in 2019, Singapore government imposed a moratorium to limit new construction of data centers. Because these data centers are eating up too much energy, generating a lot of carbon emission, and use up a lot of Singapore's water. And you know, Singapore still need to import their water from Malaysia one ma. They tabule tahan, so they stop new construction of data centers. And these data centers investment, they need to look for other countries to build their data centers. And they found Malaysia and noticed that Malaysia is a much better place to build their data centers for three reasons. Number one, Malaysia energy cost is super cheap. Data centers are energy hungry beasts. They need to run 24-7 non-stop. If they need to run on 24-7, the energy cost better be cheap. Huge amount of electricity not just need to support the hardware. The cooling system also need a lot of electricity and water to prevent it from chao hui ta. All this hardware, fans, cooling system, backup power means that these data centers owners need to find country with cheap energy cost. So Malaysia is the place to go. Some more energy reliability is super important. Cannot suddenly no electric then whole data centers shut down. There are also four tiers of data center. 
numbers in Malaysia. Data centers normally take up a big plot of land, especially for hyperscaler data centers. Like Google, because data center is equal to 12 football field size. Amazon one in Virginia is even bigger at 26 football field size. It's like a small town already. So no land, no talk. And Malaysia has almost no natural disaster. Data center cannot afford to have downtime one. Because you imagine if Google website is down, uh, the whole world will stop running and people will key sell. Uh. So they need to build data center at places that are free from natural disaster. Number three, Malaysia government support. After Singapore imposed their moratorium to limit the construction of new data centers, Malaysia government quickly understand that we can be a good place to capture this demand. Especially Johor that sits right to Singapore is in a good position to catch the next big wave of AI data centers because there are many industrial land in Johor that are empty. Since then, four data center focused industrial parks have been set up in Nusa Jaya Tech Park, Nusa Chumalang Industrial Park, Sedana Tech Park, and YTL Green Data Center Park. Elmina in Selangor also have data center for Google, but most of the data centers in Selangor are locally owned, like TM, Timecom, and YTL. Besides, our government commitment to net zero before 2050 under National Energy Transition Roadmap (NETR) has also given all these international tech companies more confidence to choose Malaysia because these companies they all also have their own net zero goals to hit. So knowing that their data centers will soon be powered by renewable energy is very important. Of course, also because our government introduced this 100% tax exemption for eligible data centers and also cloud business investments for 10 years. All in all, many international companies they choose Malaysia as the location for their data centers because we have cheap and reliable energy, good connectivity in terms of fiber network and subsea cables, cheap land costs with no natural disaster, and good government support for data center investments. So the next question is how can we benefit from this? This data center center boom in a way is like property boom. Not just benefit all the big tech companies only, but will also create a lot of demand in construction, IT, and also facility management. There are many public listed companies in the value chain that we can look at. Let's look at the value chain for data center. Industrial park developer will first need to secure customer for the data centers, such as YTL Secure C Limited, Simdabi has secured Google. Then these developers will assign job to main contractors. The construction companies will go through a bidding process. Major players like Gamuda, Sunway Construction, IJM will complete the contract from developers like YTL and Simdabi. That's why you see many of the main contractor companies share price fly after they announce their projects and also their customers. But actually, the work for these data centers already started two years ago in 2022. Now only everything materialized. Now we also start to see many companies jump on the bandwagon. You know who lah, huh? the MS company. Anyway, once main contractor got the contract, they need to lay the infrastructure and get approval from government to kickstart the project, which will take some time. So this is where the investors need to focus now. Because now the next wave of data center news to be announced will mostly be on the subcontractor side. Main contractors, they will subcontract jobs to specialized companies to handle different parts of the project. For example, a big portion of the work will go to mechanical and electrical engineering, which is the most important part of the construction of data center because it requires high level of technical expertise. It covers essential systems like power supply, cooling system, ventilation, heating, and security. These M&E firms are usually awarded contract based on their track record. One data center project normally range from 9 months to 1 year, which is a relatively short period when compared to common high-res construction projects that take up to 4 to 5 years. This data center part is so big that one of the biggest construction players in Malaysia, Southern Score. So when Southern Score heard SJEE, a mechanical and electrical engineering business was on sale, Southern Score immediately acquired 51% of SJEE for 23 million ringgit cash. SJEE has actual experience in setting up electrical work in hyper data center, hospitals, commercial and everything. That time, SJEE was making 53 million ringgit sales and 5 million ringgit profit. So now, Southern Score got the license to get the buy from the big data center pie by focusing on electrical works for data centers, uh, hospitals, uh, also pharmaceuticals. Currently, SJEE still have around 26 million ringgit order book and it is still growing. After this acquisition, Southern Score will receive 15 million ringgit profit guarantee over the next three years. Other than M&E work, another important portion 
its energy supplier like TMB. It is expected that data center industry in Malaysia will consume up to 5,000 megawatt by 2035. For comparison, Malaysia current install power generation capacity is about 37,000 megawatt only. So you can see how power hungry data center is. All eyes are on TMB now to make sure they can get reliable electricity. More electricity means we can expect those renewable energy players like those involved in the solar projects and companies that are involved in the power grid infra such as power cables will benefit too. Meanwhile, a data center with 100 megawatt capacity uses about 4.2 million liters of water every day for cooling. Malaysia already got water issue ma, always no water. So we can expect more business and investment into water infrastructure also. So now you know the whole value chain already. The question is how can we tap into this? Let me know in the comment section. Until then, stay safe and stay strong investing. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.